Hello everyone, in this video I'll focus on problems on Newton's law of motion. Okay, let's consider the first problem. Three blocks of mass, M1, M2, M3, resting on a frictionless table and connected by strings with tension T1 and T2, are being pulled to the right by a force of 6 Newton. What is the acceleration of the block? What is the tension in the string? Now, let's represent this as the block with mass m1 the second block with mass m2 and then the third block with mass m3 notice that between the blocks there will be strings that will connect this the the block okay let's say this is t1 and then the second string let's say this is t2 Alright, so the pulling force, let's represent it by this arrow, P. The pulling force is towards the right and is given as 6 Newton. Okay, and notice that, okay, the first problem is to find the acceleration of the block. F according to Newton's second law of motion, f applied force, okay, the applied force is proportional to the acceleration. Okay, so if an applied force of 6 Newton is given to this system, the theory object at the same time, it's, it will produce a particular acceleration that will be constant for all the masses. So all the objects will tend to move at the same acceleration. Okay, so anytime a vehicle is towing another vehicle, they will move at the same acceleration. Okay, because, because of the applied force that is produced probably from the engine okay so p will be equal to if we remove the proportionalities and we will introduce a constant which is the mass of the system multiplied by the acceleration of the system so mass of the system is given by m1 plus m2 plus m3 and of course that is 3 plus 2 i mean 3 plus 4 plus 6 which is equals to 13 kilogram so the applied force is given as 6 Newton and the mass of the system is 13 and then A is the acceleration of the object. So to get the acceleration, I will need to divide both sides by 13. If I divide both sides by 13, I will obtain acceleration to be equal to 6 over 13. And of course, 6 over 13 is 0 0.46 meter per second squared. So that is the acceleration of the object. M1 will move at 0 0.46, M2 the same acceleration, M3 the same acceleration. And it's, it is actually due to the applied force. So let's solve the second problem. The second problem says, what are the tensions in the string? And this is where the work begins. Now let's say, to find the tension in the string, let's consider t2 at first to find t2 we need to it should be noted that tension tension as it is is a pulling force so anytime you hear about tension remember pull it pulls an object it is always pulling an object okay so anytime it, there is a string there will always be a tension on that string and of course it is absurd to use a string to push something or a rope to use it to push something but you can use it to pull an object towards yourself so tension is always pulling an object so let's say let's consider mass m3 let's consider mass m3 now t2 in the middle of m2 and m3 it is doing two things t2 is pulling m3 okay t2 is pulling m3 it is also pulling m2 but the directions are different okay t2 pulls m2 towards this side but it pulls m3 towards this side okay if t2 pulls m3 towards this side then it is no more a pull then it becomes a push okay because t2 is behind so it you it will probably it will pull it towards itself so 
for m3 t2 will pull it towards itself and that's this r right here and then for m2 it will pull it towards itself okay so let's say this is the positive direction and then this is the negative direction okay so it means that the acceleration will be positive because the the acceleration is in the direction of the applied force and of course both acceleration and the applied force are vector quantities okay so and that's why i have this arrow right here just to represent it so for m3 it will look like this so the forces we have p right here and then the tension right here the tension is always pulling it so it tends to pull it backwards but for m2 the pull will be forward okay because it is impossible to pull it will be a push if it is directed in this manner for m2 it will be a push but if it is in this direction it will be a pull okay notice that push is away from you and then pull is towards you that is if you pull an object you're actually exerting a force directing it towards yourself as a result the total force on mass m3 okay the total force on mass m3 is equal to plus p minus t2 that is plus p that is p is in the positive direction and then tension t2 is in the negative direction if that is the net force on mass m3 that is net force on mass m3 net force on m3 if this is the net force on m3 then it has to be equal to ma where m is m3 and then a is the acceleration notice that i use this formula f equals to ma which is according to newton's second law the same formula i used in the first solution okay so but it is just that this force which acts on m3 deals with two forces that is the net force okay notice that net force is the one that produces acceleration so f here is the net force okay and for mass m3 the net force involves the addition of p and t2 it is just that t2 is in the negative direction so that's it so notice that m3 is given as 6 kg and then acceleration is 0.4 6 so 6 times 0 0.46 that will be 2.76 okay but p is given we know what p is p is given as 6 minus t2 is equal to m3 times acceleration m3 is 6 then acceleration is 0 0.6 we have just multiplied it right here and we got it as 2.76 so i just need to write 2.76 right here so it means that if i add t2 to both sides if i add t2 to both sides if i add t2 to both sides i will have 2.76 plus t2 and then equal to 6 because it will subtract each other okay and then i just need to subtract 2.76 from both sides so that i will have t2 to be equal to 2.76 2.76 so that i'll have 6 minus 2.76 right here so it means that t2 is equal to 6 minus 2.76 you can just do it directly from this place you know by making t2 the subject of the formula so 6 minus 2.76 that will be equal to 3.24 newton so that is the tension t2 so to find tension t1 that's very simple 
T1 will pull M2 towards itself, that is in this direction of my arrow, and then it will pull M1 towards itself, and that will be in this direction. Okay, so if we consider mass M2, if we consider mass M2, okay, if we consider mass M2, then the total mass is on M2 is plus T2 minus T1, okay, and that's supposed to be equal to M2 multiplied by the acceleration. M2 is equal to 4, and then the acceleration is actually 0 0.46. So if we multiply 4 by 0 0.46, that's supposed to be equal to 1.84. Okay, and then we'll have T2 minus T1. So we can make T1 the subject of the formula, and if I make T1 the subject of formula, I'll have T2 minus 1.84, okay? So T2 minus T1 is equal to 1.86. So what I did was to take minus T1 to the other side of the equation and take 1.84 to the other side of the equation or you can do it the same way I did it right here it is just to make t1 the subject of the formula so t2 we already we have gotten t2 initially as 3.24 so we'll have it a 3.24 minus 1.84 so 3.24 minus 1.84 will be equal to 1.4 newton so tension t1 is equal to 1.4 Newton. Let's solve the next problem. A baggage tractor pulling luggage carts from an airplane. The tractor has mass 650. So let's say this is the tractor. Okay. And mass of the tractor is given as 650 kilogram. Now, this tractor is actually pulling a a cart i mean luggage carts so it pulls a particular cart let's say this is the cart let's say this is cart a so mass of cart a is given as 250 kilogram okay and then cart b has its own mass which is let's say b and then mass of B is given as 150 kilogram. Okay, the driving force acting for a brief period of time accelerates the system. So we represent the driving force as this because it tends to pull the it tends to pull the object forward. So the driving force, let's say P, for a brief for a brief period of time, accelerate the system from rest. So the initial velocity u is equal to zero because the system is coming from rest so initial velocity u is zero and then act for 30 seconds so time t is equal to 30 seconds now if this driving force is given as 820 so the question wants us to represent the driving force as p as f instead of p so i'll do justice to that okay Okay, so I'll just have it as F. If the driving force is given as 820 Newton, find the speed. So I just need to find the final speed after 30 seconds. So time is 30 seconds. Now to do that, the force of attraction, which is the driving force. Okay, the driving force, which is given as 820, is proportional to the acceleration of the truck and the cats. Okay, so it means that that force will be equal to mass of the TD system multiplied by that acceleration. So we just need to find the acceleration because acceleration is not given. We know that to find the final velocity as required by the question, if we know the acceleration, it will be very, very easy because acceleration is change in velocity upon time. 
we already have this in the question we have this in the question so we can also find this because we have force and we have mass so it uh, physics is as simple as that we want to use what we have to get what we don't need what we need all right so the driving force is actually 820 and the mass of the system okay let's find the mass of the system the mass of the system is 650 plus 250 plus 150 okay and that's supposed to be 1050 kg so it's as simple as that i'll have 1050 kg multiplied by the acceleration so what i need to do is to divide both sides by 1050 kg 1050 kg so if i do that correctly 1050 kg should cancel out right here so that i should have 820 divided by 1050 kg so that i will have 0 0.78 as the acceleration okay so a is equal to 820 divided by 1050 which is 0 0.78 seven eight so if the acceleration is 0 0.78 and acceleration is change in velocity that is v initial that is final velocity minus initial velocity initial velocity is zero and the time is three seconds which means our v upon three so it implies that 0 0.78 is equals to v upon three so what i need to do is to cross multiply if i cross multiply v will be equal to 3 times 0 0.78 3 times 0 0.78 is actually equal to 2.34 don't forget the unit the unit is meter per seconds because it is velocity so that's how it is is as simple as that now to find b the b part of the question which says what is the horizontal force acting on the connecting cable between the tractor this is the tractor and the cat a so between the tractor the horizontal force that will be acting on the cable is basically the tension okay that's the tension i told you anytime you have a cable anytime you have a, a string there will be a tension on it and tension is the pulling force so the tension will tend to it will act in this direction that is it will pull the truck towards itself okay so it, it means that it will slow it down tension will always it will slow the truck down it will slow the truck to slow the truck down okay so let me just leave it that way so the applied force will push it forward so the tension will act as a pulling force so if you know if it will pull it towards itself so to find the tension i just need to consider only the truck if i consider only the truck i'll say that the net force on the truck is equal to mass of the truck okay times the acceleration of the truck the net force on the truck is given as plus 820 minus tension that is tension is in opposite direction 820 is in the positive direction then mass of the truck do we have the mass of the truck yes and that's 650 so that will be multiplied by the acceleration a so let me just rewrite that okay let me get rid of this space so 820 minus the tension is equal to 650 multiplied by the acceleration of course we got the acceleration oh i erased it the acceleration is 0 0.78 0 0.78 okay and 650 times 0 0.78 is equals to 507 so i have 820 minus the tension is equals to 507 so if i make t the subject of the formula that means i will be taking negative t to this side of the equation and i'll be taking 507 to this side of the equation if i take negative t to this side of the equation it will become positive the signs will change basically so 507 to this side of the equation the sign will change and i'll have negative so eventually i'll have 820 minus 507 
to be equal to plus t okay so it is just making t the subject of the formula so 820 minus 547 that's equals to 313 newton so that is it is as simple as that let's solve the next problem a vehicle of mass 1000 kilogram is towed by another vehicle of mass 1500 kilogram at a uniform speed so a particular vehicle which is which has a mass of 1000 kilogram so let's say let's call let's call it b okay and of course mass of b is given as 1000 kilogram also a particular vehicle which is towing b has a mass of oh, let's call that a so it has a mass of 1500 kilogram so a vehicle of mass 1000 is being towed by another vehicle of mass 1500 kilogram at a uniform speed at a uniform speed implies that acceleration is equal to zero okay uniform speed means that initial velocity u is equal to final velocity and of course acceleration is changing velocity over time okay that means they, they are uniform final is, is the same thing as initial so i will eventually have zero divided by t which is zero okay so if all resistances to motion amount to 4 newton per kilogram of mass of each vehicle that is there is friction okay so let's just show the frictional force of course there will be a pulling force right here that will be pulling mass a that is vehicle a let's say the pulling force is represented as p and of course there will be a tension on the string okay the tension for mass a the tension will be directed in this direction but for mass b the tension will be directed in this direction so of course let's represent the frictional force for each of the masses as given in the question so the frictional force for mass a if the pulling force is in this direction okay if the pulling force is in this direction it means that the frictional force will go in this direction for mass a also the frictional force will go in this direction for mass b so let's say the frictional force is represented as f sub a okay let's represent it as fb for mass b notice that the question says if all resistances to motion amount to 4 newton per kilogram of mass of each vehicle so for me to get the total frictional force for vehicle a i just need to multiply 4 newton per kilogram by the mass of vehicle a so and of course if i must if i do the mass of vehicle a multiplied by the frictional acceleration okay and mass of vehicle a is given as 1500 the frictional acceleration is 4 so 1500 times 4 is actually 6000 newton okay so it is just like having f equal to ma all right so if and the unit is still newton notice that the unit of 4 is newton per kilogram so for every kilogram for of the mass of vehicle a there is a particular frictional acceleration the acceleration is due to the frictional force so the same thing with mass b so i just need to multiply 4 newton per kilogram by the total mass of the object that's 1500 no the mass of b that's 1000 and of course that is 4000 newton so the frictional force on b is 4000 and the frictional force on a is two is 6000 okay now the first question says determine the pulling force of the 1500 kilogram vehicle so the 1500 kilogram vehicle is the a that is for mass a 
the total force on mass A. There are three forces on mass A. So I just need to say that the net force on mass A is equal to mass of A multiplied by the acceleration. Okay, but notice that acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, this the acceleration is equal to zero. This four right here is not the acceleration of the object. The four right here is the frictional acceleration, the acceleration that is produced due to the frictional force. That's why the question says if all resistances to motion amount to four newton per kilogram, resistance to motion is friction. Okay, so acceleration is equal to zero. We have already been told. Okay, so for object A, we have already been told that the the vehicle is pulling the other vehicle at a uniform speed. So this acceleration is actually equal to zero. So for mass A, the net force is equal to zero. And of course, the net force on object A is plus P, then minus T, and then minus FA. If this direction is the positive direction and this direction is the negative direction. Okay? So, notice that this friction we always op oppose the applied force, the pulling force. So, friction is always opposing the pulling force. That's why friction is negative in this direction. So, now it has to be equal to zero. It is zero because the acceleration is zero. That is, the object is moving at a uniform speed. So, if I multiply mass of object A times zero, I'll still have zero. So, that's why I have zero right here. So I'm actually looking for P because P is representing the pulling force of the 1,500 kilogram vehicle. So I simply do not know T. I don't know T yet, but I know FA. So I can transfer minus T to the other side of the equation. It will become positive. And I also transfer minus FA to the other side of the equation. It will become positive. So it means that... I will have T plus FA. FA is actually 6,000. 6,000 Newton. So what I just need to find is T, which is tension. So for me to find that, I can just consider mass B. If I consider mass B, tension is the only force acting on B. No, there are two forces acting on B, tension and the frictional force. So I will just say plus T. Notice the direction of T. It is towards the positive axis plus t then minus fb okay which is equals to mass times acceleration that is mass of b times the acceleration of b and the acceleration of b is zero because it is moving at a uniform speed so that's equal to zero so t is equals to or t minus fb is equals to zero so it implies that t is equal to fb and FB is equal to 4,000. So it means that P from the first equation that I wrote, P will be equal to where P is equal to T plus 6,000. So instead of having T right here, I will have 4,000 plus 6,000. And that is equal to 10,000. So the pulling force of the 1,500 kilogram is 10,000 Newton. So it's very, very simple. You just need to know that the acceleration that is gotten due to the applied force is equal to zero. Okay? Because the objects are pulling themselves at a uniform speed. In the last problems, in the initial problems that we solved, the acceleration is not equal to zero because we were given and it, we were not told that the objects were moving at a uniform speed. We were given the acceleration. Okay, so that's it. And the other difference is that this one has friction. And it's not a big deal. The friction is opposing the applied force. So that's why we have it as this. Okay, so to get the second, the second problem says the change in the pulling force, assuming the two vehicle accelerates at 5 meter per second squared so now the vehicle are not accelerating at a uniform speed anymore they are now accelerating at 5 meter per second squared so if they accelerate at 5 meter per second squared 
remember this equation p minus t minus f a which is equals to zero or no it will not be equal to zero anymore it will be equal to mass times acceleration that is the net force on on the first vehicle that is on the on the first vehicle the net force on the first vehicle which is equal to mass of the object a times the acceleration now mass of object a is 1500 and the acceleration is now 5 is no more 0 so 1500 if we multiply it by 5 we'll have 7500 okay so it means that p minus t minus f a is equal to 7500 so p is equal to 7500 plus t and then plus f a okay but f a is given as 6000 so i just need to add 6000 plus 7500 and of course that is 13500 plus t okay notice that that is the equation for the pulling force now to find t i just need to go to object b that is mass b so that i will have t minus fb to be equal to mass of b multiplied by the acceleration of b and the acceleration of b is also 5 they are moving at the same acceleration so mass of b is 1000 so if i multiply 1000 by 5 i should have 5000 so t minus fb is equal to 5000 so it means that t is equal to 5000 plus fb but they, i have a value for fb already fb is given as 4000 as a result i'll have tension t to be equal to 9000 newton so if i substitute tension t which is 9000 newton into this equation right here I'll have the pulling force P to be equal to 13,500 plus the tension, the tension which is 9,000 Newton. So 13,500 plus 9,000, that's supposed to be equal to 22,500 Newton. So that's it.